Hello everyone and welcome to this question round number two. For all who don't know, I took some comments, some questions for Hendrik, some questions from my friends and also some questions from me. Summarized all this, sent it to Starvolt and uh, Hendrik got the time and answered it. First we wanted to make a face-to-face -face Q&A but Hendrik's time is really short and I respect that. So I will read the questions and the answers for you while we are exploring this Farbanum Tower. Wouldn't it be awesome to connect the, the Tindrum sewers with the Farbanum Tower dungeon or other dungeons together, like an underground mural and cave system? Henrik's answer, it would, yes, and it's something we discussed, like how it was in Mortal Online 1, from graveyard sewers to Farber, to Farbanum to Tindrum. The distance is much greater this time though, so we want to make sure it has sense and it's interesting to explore first of all. For all who don't know about this, in Mortal Online 1 Hendrik already had the idea to connect the Hindum sewers with the Farbanum uh, dungeon, uh, but it was not the tower dungeon, it was the graveyard dungeon under the Farbanum graveyard. But in the end uh, they never connected the dungeons together. Hendrik said once uh, as an idea maybe you need to dive um, through some water um, to reach uh, the other side. And just my personal opinion on this, as a crafter, adventurer, explorer, whatever, I would really like to see such a such a dense cave system where you can run around hours without finding an exit. That would be awesome because uh, then actually knowledge about all these systems or the cave systems would be very important. So anyway to our next question. Do Clade war cries stack to anyone around or only to guild and alliance members? And that is a concern from a lot of players actually. Because if you are in a group fight with your friends and stuff and you're maybe not in the guild or in the alliance, um, then you can buff all the Alvarines for example. If you are an Alvarine and you do this buff and you have a lot of enemies nearby, um, then you also buff the enemies. And the second concern was because it says um, buff to all Alvarines. Uh, that would imply that you can also buff your enemies. So let's see what Hendrik says about that. They stack with your guild friends, so coordinated war cries in group fights can be changing the outcome of a situation if used properly. Okay, so it will only stack up if uh, these people are in my guild. But what is with uh, the alien system? I, I, I just guess um, that it will be like the guild system. If um, the other guy is in your alliance, then he also get uh, the buff. I mean, uh, that is at least what I hope for. Up to a very interesting question. Will flattery allow the crafting of blunt arrow tips? I mean, it's already confirmed that flattery crafting arrows will be in game, but uh, this was just a random comment. We will enable flattery to make your own arrows eventually, for now you still have to buy or loot them. I guess I know why he said eventually, because balancing all of this is a complete nightmare. After 10 years without flattery, the game system itself is kinda balanced, always depending on who you ask of course, but now in uh, this more or less fleshed out uh, MMO, implementing something like this must be made with care and a lot of time and testing. But making your own arrows would be really awesome. Or even if you're out of arrows, you can fieldcraft something of them. That would be awesome. But now to something personally. Many of my guildmates ask that. Will the Wolf's Side Cape and others from Mortal Online 1 transfer over into Mortal Online 2? Oh man, our black, red, gold, German wolf cape. That would be awesome. I mean, look at this. It's wonderful. And the runes on the cape is actually a uh, Wolf's Side. Oh man, I love this cape. Now I'm excited for Hendrik's answer. We need some time to go through all capes and veteran capes from Mortal Online 1 before we are looking to add them in Mortal Online 2. Since all our art is more or less being redesigned and increased quality wise to make sure it's all on the same level. Yeah Hendrik I don't mean um, just use uh, the same uh, PNGs and uh, the same stuff, just ask the people to give you more high quality shit of their capes. I mean I don't have the original designs of the wolf side cape, but maybe I can try to recreate it and print it out in 8k if you need it in 8k resolution. So please implement that again. But now up to our next very interesting topic. Will only horses be able to mount cards? Or can we use Campodons or Minos? I wonder how many kilograms a Mino can carry. Henrik's answer, we plan to allow many different mounts to be ridden or used as transportation with carts and similar. So yes, a Campodon could very well be pulling a cart. Holy moly, uh, that is a huge variety of stuff we can uh, put on cards, I think. Maybe I can use big white rabbits or something like that. But let's see how it is b balance wise and how it is bug wise and stuff. A very well known dagger fighter asked, 
Will Backstep get added into Mortal Online 2 and will it be the same mechanic as in Mortal Online 1? We will implement special moves for each weapon type in Mortal Online 1. Backstep is most likely one of those moves for weapons such as dagger. For all who don't know what backstab is, if you have a dagger for example, you're standing behind someone and you uh, make the backstab skill to his head and uh, sometimes it makes so much damage that the people instant die. But Dex dagger fighters also used uh, this mechanic in group combat, which gave them the opportunity to be really hardcore damage dealers. This question is asked from a friend of mine and he's a very well-known cook. I don't know if you know Dr. Chaos. If you don't know, there's a food advertisement linked in the description. Cringe intensifies. <coughs> Make Nave great again. Are you planning to allow cooking with already cooked materials and meals? That is really interesting because if that is possible, then we have not even millions of opportunities. We have billions of opportunities. Not sure if we will. Cooking is in Matt's department and to my knowledge, we don't plan to expand on it. Currently, other than look into balance to how effective food is and how it affects reserves. I think this is bad news for Dr. Chaos. I mean, he played like nine years and that only the cook. Okay, and, and some fighting and some other stuff, but, but mainly he was the cook for the whole guild. So I hope Star World will improve something on the cooking. Because if everyone could make very, very, very good food, then it's boring. But in Mortal Kombat 1, it was just Dr. Chaos who, who got the, 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 the most ancient secret recipes. Most people don't know that cooking have even more variety than alchemy. But anyway, up to the next question. Will customization options be linked to the lore or will you be able to add blue hair and mustaches for alverines, for example? Okay, so holy shit. Now we poked into the beehive. We are careful about what kind of options we give the players in character creation and then later on in-game customization. Of course, we want to give tons of variation and options to give the players the option to be creative. But we want to make sure it respects the visual level quality-wise and somewhat lore-wise. We don't go the traditional road in terms of making blue, red, green hair, as it's not really the style of MO. This is why you will see a believable range of options when making your character that also respects the lore. With that said, there will be more options over time in the game that ties to skills and professions such as Barber, which allow a player to discover and learn new hair beard styles that can be offered to players. There will be a die system which we plan to support dice where it makes sense and we will do our best in making sure it looks believable. That sounds wonderful. I think I can see the entrance. So one off topic question, the question of questions, of course, where many mysterious rumors floating around. Henrik, do you like instant noodles? And his answer is sure, that works. Ah, I knew it. Hendrik is a man of culture. So anyway, special thanks to Star World. Also special thanks to my Patreon supporters Kamel, the Dragon Slayer and Don Dexter and the others. So if you have any feedback, questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comments. Also, please like and subscribe. And always remember to make party hard. See you all next time. Goodbye.